When Tyson Fury's eyes open wide in the 12th, I truly knew through Man, these things are impossible But still my eyes were closed till I came close to the same power that devoured death The breath of life, it changed me, rearranged me, drained me and remade me Never blamed me, tamed me, made me well Crazy lately, the devil tried to take me to hell but I resisted and he fled like the scripture said I wear the starkest armour in the darkest hour The showers of my lavish father make my harvest larger And since I reap what I sow I'm spreading love across the field so I can yield some more uh. I'm simply spitting in the spirit If you hear me then you're with it I was sick of spitting gimmicks All the glory goes to God and he gives me the victory Come on, uh I used to be a slave to my old ways In a cold place I was blind A servant of my smoke Tormented by my thoughts Used to have a heart of stone I used to be alone I used to be a slave to my old ways In a cold place I was blind A servant of my smoke Tormented by my thoughts Used to have a heart of stone I used to be alone Telling me to go back But deception is the oldest trick in the book And I got falling for that So I step on the head of the serpent And remain as a fearful servant With Jesus as my teacher I must speak on what I'm learning I preach on beats with meaning and Good evening wherever you are in the world And whatever platform you are watching Or and listening to This is Wrestling With Faith And you can get us at the following uh, Twitter Faith underscore wrestling that's twitter and it's faith underscore wrestling or on youtube.com slash wrestling with faith uk that's youtube.com slash wrestling with faith uk and also on facebook facebook.com wrestling with faith uk again and um the, the the criteria for this podcast is very very simple we discuss anything and all things wrestling related if people want to. But more importantly, we discuss matters of faith, giving all the glory to God for where we are in our lives and all the blessings that are going to come forward. And for people who want to uh, be curious about those views and even challenge those views as well as encourage those views. Get on the podcast. Let's have a discussion. And also as well. Uh, matters of mental health so people who have been through mental health who are going through mental health or can offer support advice and guidance for those others who are watching and listening as well get on the podcast reach me any of those platforms and without further ado full circle now for the wrestling with faith podcast because this guy was one of the first two gentlemen who um well this they give their testimonies, which opened up Wrestling With Faith as a podcast. And it's my good friend, uh, musician and all-round good guy, uh, devoted Christian as well, and just all-round super nice guy, Felix, a.k.a. Connor Phelan. Most important question I'm going to ask you today, brother, how are you? Yeah, I'm absolutely blessed, brother. It's good to be back on here, of course, like you say. Because um, I remember when we was working together, you were starting this thing up and everything. And um, like I say, it's gone full circle. And for those that don't know out there as well, you was actually my mental health, what would we say, ambassador, something like that? At First aider, ambassador. First yeah. aider, something, yeah, yeah, something like that. So, you know, um, it's it's a blessing to be able to glorify God, share my testimony, just show people, you know, if you trust in God and you seek him and you seek him first, just what, you know, what he can do, the way he can move, it's yeah, it's amazing. So when you give God the wheel, the journey is just so much more fun. And it's so much more secure as well. Okay. God is the Uber driver who just knows all the obstacles and knows how to maneuver around them and over them and under them. So yeah, giving all the glory to God, man. And that brings us on nicely because when we did your um your testimony. Uh, which was getting over a year ago now, and you were giving me all the tips of the trade on how to get on social media with it, how to do things on Twitter and stuff like that. And um, things were very different. You were uh, working at a different place. 
your music was starting to change as well. The the creativity of your music, the vibe and the actual genre, I would say, uh, and meaning and matter of your music was changing. And also as well, very early stages of you giving your life to God. So take us through, man, that process between then and now and all the changes that God has guided you in in between that phase. Yeah, well, there's a lot there. There really is. <laughs> you know, there's a lot. Um, I think the first thing I'd say is, because, you, you know, you, you put me really in that moment right there when I was first learning to trust God. And there was just so much darkness in my life and in my heart. Like, like so, it was so intense. Um, and I was, I'd lived like that from at least being the age of 14, 15, up until being like 25. So you're talking to the point where I just kind of accepted that this was normal, you know, this just sheer darkness, like the depression, the like the suicidal thoughts on a basis and just, just being so vulnerable towards like, I'd say towards my own emotions, but on a spiritual level, we know it goes much deeper than that. And I remember being at rescue. Um, and literally, the tiniest thing could happen, and that's it. Now, today's a bad day now, you know. And it was just so unreal, just just being so overtaken by just these negative emotions. And in that moment where, which you described there, where I'd started to trust God, I really had to put a lot of effort into just focusing on God. I think that was the main thing that got me through that time period was focusing on God, which is something, it's a practice that has to be developed, you know. And, you know, to this day, sometimes I'll slip up. But one thing that really carries me through to this day is just to be able to focus on God. Um, you know, like Peter, when he's walking on the water, he, he takes his eyes off Christ and he starts to drown. And the same thing. And I, I guess I was constantly drowning. I was constantly underwater, which mm. was pretty insane. Um, so a lot has changed from then. And I really do just give all the glory to God. I've just I've focused on him the best I can. So I was attending church three times a week. Now I can't do Wednesdays, but that's a blessing in itself, which is pretty insane. Um, we'll, co we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, the music, now here's a blessing. So I had a good friend of mine from, so when I was about nearly 18, so I was 17 and I joined the Costellos. The lead singer at the time was Steve Pennycad. And um, he's always been quite a supportive guy. He listened to my music and all of that. Now, he came to the event that I put on recently, Finding Faith. Now, you was there, so you know this, but it was a gospel event in a secular venue, and I was debuting material from my new album, which was Finding Faith. And I thought Finding Faith was a better name for the event than The Bible Bash. <laughs> so we <laughs> went with that, you know. Um, and he said to me at the end of the night, because... What I'll, I'll tell you what gave me the idea to, to start doing music like this was for a start, I wanted to glorify God. I told God, look, show me you're real. I'll give you my life. I'll give you everything. Yeah, and people, believers or not, always responded really positively to the um, to the Christian content in the music. Because um, I just, you know, like you say, I let God take the wheel and his word doesn't return to him void. So that always touched people. So it's like, right, we're doing a full album of it. Then we're doing a full event. And when Steve was at the event, he came up to me at the end and he said, it's so, it's so amazing to see the difference in you. And this is something that people tell me on a regular basis. People who have known me in the past, be it from school, people who knew me from rescue, people who knew me from being in the band or on the music scene or people who I'd met through boxing and stuff. They, they always come to and my family as well. They'll always say it's amazing to see the change because I'm a radically different person. It's, it's quite literally night and day. And what he said was your old material. Yeah, it was, it was good musically. I'd groove and everything, but 
the new stuff is just so positive and it's just such a, a breath of fresh air. Um, whereas the old stuff was so angry. Like, you know, I could really tell the old stuff was really just venting all of that darkness. And there's one song I remember from the old me and it was called Dark Sad. And even then I'd, I would just hate to listen to that because it was an embodiment of all of that, just all of that darkness. And mm. it was ruthless. Whereas now to be doing this project for Christ and looking forward to the projects that I'm going to be working on, which I'm really looking forward to, um, is just, yeah, the, the difference is immense, you know? Yeah. I mean, you touch upon that, the, um, the finding faith night, which was just brilliant. Like you say, I was there, I got to witness it. Uh, you and uh, members of Potter's House on there, as well as mm -hmm. members of Beats Bus as well. Um, obviously, big shout out to the Beats Bus as well, because Red Eye uh, was the first person to do his uh, to do a testimony on uh, on Wrestling in Faith. And obviously, Red Eye, you know very, very well. Um, on that as well, you know, you've referenced the older material and people have said it's a lot darker, it's a lot angrier. But that is a representation and an important part of your journey, isn't it, though, Connor? You can look back on that and say, to anybody, okay, so you meet somebody like what you were going through in five, ten years from now, and you can say, look, this is where I was when I was that age, but look at where I am now. And you've got a timeline there in your art, in your music. You've got a timeline. You can give a testimony, which is fantastic, but you've got an, a, a timeline in your art there, in your music that says, this is who I was, this is what I was rapping um, and and creating at the time and manifesting, and this is what I'm rapping and creating and manifesting now. This is the journey in between that. And it's so important, I think, from somebody who's gone for the changes that you have, to have that in its art form as well, to say that, you know, you don't have to, bin off or shove in a shelf, uh, shove in a drawer what you've done before because it's part of that journey, isn't it? And obviously, since then, your music has really, really kicked on as a solo artist. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Are you do you feel that your old stuff is something to be ashamed of, or would you use that as part of the example of your testimony? Well, it's, it's funny you bring that up because. When I first um, <clears throat> decided, look, I'm going to start making music this way, the thought had crossed my mind, should I get rid of the old stuff? Should I put the new stuff under a separate name? And I made the decision to keep it all as one deliberately so that if you was to actually go through my material start to finish, you would see the pinnacle point where that changes, which would be when I met Christ. And that in itself is a testimony um, and there's people out there, um, you know, who listen to my music, who, who listen to the old stuff, and they, they still don't know yet. So mm -hmm. that's going to probably, be, you know, it'll catch them off guard, won't it? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's not anything to be ashamed of. And where I stand with any of that is if, if I ever meet somebody, whether they're born again or not, but, you know, being Christian, if they're born again um, and I find out that their past were like, the more ruthless their past and the more in sin they were or like the worse off they was, the greater their story is. And mm. it always just makes me respect people so much more if they've been even lower in the past because, mm. you know, it shows that they've managed to claw their way out of that. They've managed to, you know, look where they've come from kind of thing, you know. 100%. So it's, yeah. For 100%. me, it's a, it's a huge positive. It is as well. I mean, you know, we can go back to many biblical accounts of where people were once this and then they became this. Probably the greatest one for me is Saul um, on the road to Damascus. You know, this guy for a living was second only to the chief rabbi at the time and was killing Christians, throwing them in prison. Um, and then on the road to Damascus, got blinded. The veil was lifted. And he became Paul and he became the most um, well-spoken um, sort of 
media hungry for its generation, for its time, a puzzle out of them all. You know, ended up writing most books of the New Testament. And this is a guy that prior to that would uh, quite happily, you know, do a Christian over, you know, throw them in the slums and, and, and do worse to them. Biggest testimony of all, I think, certainly in the New Testament, is that example. And that's just not specific for someone like, like Saul, because he was just a person. He wasn't... Um, he, he wasn't anything spiritual. He wasn't. He didn't have any divine right or anything like that. He was just a guy who happened to be in a position where he, you know, he was told to do that to Christians. And then Jesus said, "Why do you forsake me?" Yeah. And Jesus had a bigger plan for him. And Saul must have been in his maybe twenties, maybe thirties, forties. We don't know how old he was at the time when he when he was on the road to Damascus. But from that moment onwards, he spent the rest of his life traveling the world. Um, getting shipwrecked and thrown in prison and all sorts but not once from that moment when he turned his life over to christ did he waver and that can happen to anybody can't it it, it doesn't matter who you were what music you're into what music you promoted what music you did or movies that you watch or lifestyle that you led or you know what you ate what you drunk and etc etc everybody's got that opportunity but i would always say to everybody that don't put it off till tomorrow because tomorrow may never come. You know, if you've got that in your heart now, if God's putting you in that heart to say, stop what you're doing, stop now on this road that you're on, listen to me and change, then it's got to be done there and then because as we know, God can give you over to a reprobate mind and can harden your heart as well if you continue to ignore yeah. it. Thankfully, you didn't ignore and you made that decision. So from that, we touched upon the music, we touched career-wise then whereas because you had to take a big leap of faith you had as you've already touched on uh as, as a secular job and it wasn't a bad job i mean let's be honest there are worse places to work for i mean i we we both had a good time in that particular call center we enjoyed it that's where you and i met god put us together god put people like ronith from potter's house church in our lives as well obviously mm -hmm. big shout out to tombo as well uh, and Annie G and various others. And we got together and we created our own godly group chat on Teams <laughs> in between work whilst yeah. taking and making calls, you know, doing our day-to-day -day job. So there's a blessing to be had. Um, and I'm thankful, really thankful for Rescue for taking that opportunity and that chance on all of us because God had a plan. You know, there's no coincidences with God. You've said that you, you heard me say that till the cows come home. There are never any coincidences with God. Yeah. So it's meant to be. But you had to take a big leap of faith. You had that, that regular income, that regular job, which you could have stayed there, you could have probably been there now. What happened to make you want to leave that and do what you were doing? So that is a, yeah, it's a pretty crazy story, to be honest with you. So first things first, like what came before the job was I also had like a house, an independence, a spouse, you know, who was engaged and everything. And, you know, this this was all set up from before I met God when I was in control and on the wheel and everything. And I went to London. I went to a conference in London, which was a full, it was five days. And I'm pretty sure it's five preachers a day. And uh, so that's 25 sermons within the space of five days. And the way that it goes with these guys, like, they don't speak to each other and say, look, what are you going to talk about? I'm going to talk about this while well, I'm reading from the scripture. It, it doesn't go like that. Um, and it's something like until you experience it yourself, it's kind of hard to fathom how the Holy Spirit works, you know, mm -hmm. communicating through the pastors and to each person. Because it's crazy how God can address a room of 20,000. He can speak to the 20,000, but he can also speak one-to-one -to, -one to each of those 20,000 people Amen. differently with the same words through the same preacher, which is you just got to experience it or you won't get it. Because And I see this time and time again with people who we bring to church. It, it's, it, it's crazy because I've seen it so many times. You'd think it would stop being amazing, but it, it doesn't, no. you know. So I was at this um, conference and these pastors, they don't speak to each other, but there's always a coherent message. Like God will just deliver that through them. And it, it's so, it's insane. Um, so the first day 
I kind of felt like God was telling me something. But I I really wanted to be sure in order to to you know make the change because it was I'll be honest it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. Um, Tuesday confirmed it. Wednesday confirmed it. I was praying about it Wednesday night and on Thursday in the service I was quite literally just reduced to tears because I knew I knew I was like this I, this is something I have to do. It, I just knew it. Um, there was no running away from it anymore. I was trying to wrestle with God about this. And I was trying to be like, come on, is, is there any other way? Is this really what has to be done? You know, please tell me I've misinterpreted this. Now, with that, I'm kidding myself because I've not. It was just as clear as day. And basically, and I, I remember that the pinnacle point was when I was praying to God and I was saying, please, please make another way. Like, please tell me this is not the way this has to go. Um, basically, have this cup pass from me, right? Um, and I said, but nevertheless, may your will be fulfilled rather than my own. And then yeah, God basically, he told me, look, this is what Christ prayed in Gethsemane. Yeah. And... um. From that moment, as soon as I thought, look, there's no getting away from this now. I have to do this. I mean, if Christ prayed the same prayer in Gethsemane and went through what he went through on the cross for our salvation, you know, how much like we 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 owe him an unpayable debt, really, um, okay. from what he's done for us. So what you know, how much I, I can't really keep this from from Christ. And also, I know that he has our best intentions at heart. That's well. the key thing in it. Yeah. yeah. So you you got to really trust God. So I really did. And, and I, I can't stress enough, this was the hardest thing I've ever had to do because I was engaged, right? And I asked I asked to marry me for a reason, right? This, this wasn't just a joke or anything. This was serious. We had a house together and everything. Um, and it just wasn't right. So I had to leave because I wasn't living right. I wasn't. I just, it wasn't what God wanted for me. And I just knew that, you know, and I wanted to stay, but I, I had to leave. And it, it was, it was horrible. It really was. It was awful. It was dark times. It really was. And I just had to pray to God, like, just pray. Like, I, I just hope that you see my heart, you know, to understand that I'm pursuing you. Um, and I just, I was just spending a lot of time praying, just letting God know that I trusted him. Um, and just casting my cares into him, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was rough. It really was rough. And it come to a point where, like, so I'd, I've moved back in with my parents temporarily while I build on my music career and everything. Uh, so I was I was in my mum's loft, right? Because I, I sleep in my mum's loft. And I work, I was working from home at rescue. I was working in my mum's loft. I got my studio set up here, so I was making music in my mum's loft as well and doing all the bits that include, you know, all the bits included with that. So, you know, sorting out invoices and emails and having meetings with funders in my loft, you know, well, in my mum's loft at least. Um, and also, like, for a bit of leisure, I'd be just gaming for downtime in my mum's loft as well, you know, a bit of Rocket League or whatever with the boys, you know. No, that's a lot of time in your mum's loft, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's nowhere near. It's nowhere near this. I don't want to be dramatic, but it's kind of like, you know, Joseph, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> except my mum's loft is not a prison, man. It's, no, it's, 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 no. it's cushy. It's a blessing. <laughs> it's beautiful, right? But I was I was praying to God one day, and I was like, look, I, I didn't, I, I won't complain in, and I wasn't asking anything of God, but I was just feeling down. And when, when you have a relationship with God, it is exactly that. It's a relationship. So I was just spending some time with God. And I was saying, look, I'm not I'm not being ungrateful. I'm not moaning or anything. I'm I'm just it's a relationship. Like if if you're in like like you've got a wife, for example, I'm sure if one of you feels down. You just speak to the other about it. That doesn't yeah. mean you're saying, look, fix this. You, you, you're just having an open heart. So yeah, I was yeah. praying to God and I was just letting him know, look, I, I just, I'm feeling so down. Like, 
because as well, like I used to work out. I had a boxing, like a punch bag, at, and like there was a workshop at the house, and I was able to get fit there. And like I was neglecting my body for years. I just started getting fit, and I couldn't do that anymore. The rescue, as good as it is, um, the hours are just mental for someone like myself who, who was in a creative field. It leaves you with no time to do anything else. I'm in the band as well on the weekend side. So no time to do anything. No time to work out. I was just constantly in the loft and all of these problems. And I was just casting them to God. And then he told me, hand you noticing. And I knew it was God because immediately I just felt this peace. Like this yes. just immense, immense peace. And I just knew I was like, whoa. And, and I thought that that's cr-. And the more I thought about it, it fixed every single one of those problems. Every single one. Um, so I messaged uh, Heavy B, big up Heavy B, my team leader at the time. And I said, uh, I've got to have my notice in. Um, you know, I handed my notice in. And on the same day that I handed my notice in, right, I got a call from Steve from Beats Bus, who is Red Eye. Yeah. Really quick, I'm just going to say I love those guys, man. They've, they've been a huge part of my journey and they, they are top hey, lads, man. really are top lads firm believers so he calls me up and he says look <laughs> there's an opportunity here it's two things that you really love boxing and music Vulcan <laughs> Learning Centre which is a boxing gym <laughs> have created a, a music studio and a podcast suite and they need someone to run it and teach the kids and everything um, and it it just it blew my mind right and I handed my notice in and it was a month's notice and it was Black Friday. So I worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then I had a day's rest. And the first day at Vulcan was on the Wednesday. And you just can't make this up. And like just to add to that is you yourself, way, way, way before this, God gave you a vision and you said, that there was like a ministry and it was boxing, wrestling and music. And um, maybe it's not fully come to fruition yet because there's no wrestling going on there. But <laughs> and, and when you told me this, I'm thinking, look, I know that you, like one of your gifts is that the Lord shows you things, right? So I, I thought, I believe him. I thought, I believe you. And... But I'm thinking, I haven't done any boxing for like seven years. This was at the time you told me this. So I thought, I don't know where this is going, to be honest with you. But, you know, if if that's God's plan, then it's a blessing. You know, I receive it in Jesus' name. But I, did, I didn't think too much of it, especially for the part of my journey. I was just there. I was trying yeah. to really just get, get to learn to trust and focus on God. But you, you God showed you that. Um and it just goes to show, like, you trust God, and this is what he can do for you. And it, even it's Friday now, right? So, yeah, two days ago. So two days ago, I was, like, because I'm pretty broke, right? That's, that happens when you leave your job. You know? <laughs> <laughs> bit, no way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm broke. And um, I, on just on Wednesday, I was praying to God, and I was saying, look, Lord, I, I've been feeling quite distant recently in the prayer life because I've, I've finished this big project i finished the show the albums there, ready to package up and i just spent a bit of time just focusing on just chilling out because we all need to chill out i mean you know the lord will give you rest but come on now <laughs> there's nothing wrong with with a bit of rocket league with the lads or anything right no, no man yeah, chilling out. worst games you could be playing yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm praying to god and i'm saying look i feel quite distant and i didn't ask anything of him again i asked nothing I was just praising God and I was just saying, look, just 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 exalting his name and thanking him for all that he's done, all that he delivered me from, and all of that. And um I turned up to work at rescue uh, at rescue at, at Vulcan, because I only do one day a week. And then the guy says to me, Look, we want you to do three days a week starting next week. So now I and I called Red Eye and he said that is your bread and butter now. This is it. Like now I'm able to actually earn what I need off of what I love. And in the meantime, I can focus on building the career, I can focus on 
making my own music and building a name for myself. But my bread and butter and what I need financially is right there coming from coming from what I love. And quite literally, over the past couple of weeks especially, I've been really, really scraping margarine off the edge of the tin, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been struggling, man, but, I, but I, I've had it in my heart that God is my provider. And I've been thinking, God is my provider, this is going to be fine. And Wednesday I pray, and then I turns up and, and I get told that, which is just... It's beautiful, you know, it's beautiful. And oh, wow. he makes back, a way when there is no way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And looking back, if I'd have stayed where I was when I was in London in the relationship with a house and everything, I would have still had a mortgage to, to be responsible for and all these bills to pay. I would have still had um she she she's a lovely girl. She really is, she's a lovely girl, but a, a spouse is a big um is a big responsibility you know you have to be committed to the person I'm not I was committed to the person but when you know you know when I've left that that life that then enabled me to be able to leave rescue which then enabled me to start working at Vulcan which which puts me where I am now and we just know that God is still building right this is yeah. only the beginning but um that in itself it just shows look if you just trust God it, as hard as it will be, as hard as it may be, you know, because he does ask us to sacrifice things. That is true. Mm. Um, but it reminds me, and my brother loved this. When my brother first found Christ, he said he saw this picture and there's a child and Jesus is there. <laughs> and that Jesus is asking the child to give him his teddy bear. And the child loves the teddy bear and he's holding on to the teddy bear, this little bear, and he's like, he don't want to let this bear go, but Jesus is like, trust me, give me this teddy bear. And behind his back is, is a massive teddy bear, you know, a huge. And my brother always loved that, that image. And it's, it's true. It really is. You know, you don't, you don't know what God's got for you. No. Um, yeah. All the glory to God. And it's been an amazing journey, mate. And I, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to like see the changes that have been in your life. Obviously we're friends. Um, we was friends in work, obviously we're friends outside work, we've remained so and will remain so. And, you know, this is, no Christian's ever arrived, but you're on your way. Do you know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. the most important thing is like, you've let go of the wheel now, Christ is in control. Don't worry about which route he takes. He knows the route, he knows the way. And like I say, yeah. he makes a way where there is no way. And, you know, the man who believes in his heart that there is no God is a fool, you know, and and we'll read the benefits of the foolishness of this world as well. Whereas we know this world is great. We're going to get the blessings of God in this world as well as the one after. Do you know what I mean, man? And it's yeah, just yeah. all going to be. And it's all about the legacy that we leave in it, Connor, as well, for future generations. It's like, you know, these, these people just stopped, looked around, surveyed it and went, yeah, this is garbage. This is the way we need to go. Do you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. there'll be no more walking around the mountains in the wilderness anymore for 40 years when the, the land of milk and honey is literally just a swim away. Do you know what I mean? We'll take the giants on. Bring on bring on the giants, man. I guarantee Amen. you they're going to flee Amen. in the name of God. We've got literally three minutes left now, brother. Wow. And it's been wow, okay. another... Well, when you're talking about God, mate, do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it flies, you know. Well, it is because it's all it's all good. It's a day is a thousand day. years, and a thousand oh, years is a day to the Lord. Yeah, you know? uh, honestly, it's all good. <laughs> so, what I want you to do now, brother, is use this two and a half minutes that we've got left to plug anything and everything that you're involved in, your socials, where you're at, where you can be found, and what's coming up in the future as well. Brilliant. Okay, so you can find me on um, on SoundCloud, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, all of those is on Felix Tunes. I've got a free download of a single I released on SoundCloud called Throw Hands. You can get that out there. Keep an eye out for Finding Faith because that's the new upcoming album. There's going to be a few singles dropping from that before that comes out, the first of which will be Activist. Um, that was performed live at the show. So I'd say check that out. Just keep an eye out. I'm going to be posting videos on YouTube. We've got things in the works. And slowly, we're going to start pushing this and, and get back out there with the music. Awesome. And on this podcast as well, you will hear at the beginning and also at the end, 
examples of Connor's album. I'm going to obviously let you uh, email those to me, Felix, whichever ones you want me to put on for this podcast as well. It's just a little taster, just a little sous-son for the people. Do you know what I mean? Drop a little bit of velvet, a little bit of Jesus velvet in the ears of the listeners, man. So <laughs> let's get it done. Um, and that's Felix Tunes, all one word. Felix with a PH, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. P-H-E-L-I-X. Felix Excellent. Tunes, one word. All one word. And you can get them all those socials. Connor's going to also drop me um, those links as well uh, on email or Twitter. And I will upload those to the uh, YouTube as well. So you can click on those. Uh, hopefully we'll set them up as hyperlinks so you can click on those links directly as well. Connor Phelan, a.k.a. Felix, it has been a blessing, brother. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a journey, man. And, you know, it, it's 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 getting greener and greener, man. And it's only going to get better and better. So praise God for that. Thank you for your time today, brother. You have been listening and or watching Wrestling With Faith with Connor Phelan, a.k.a. Felix. And thank you. God bless and take care. And really appreciate your support. All the best, Connor, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro. God bless. God bless. Garden the Gethsemane for 30 pieces of silver. Only one of his followers tried to stop the officers, and the Lord told him to put back the sword. He even heals the ear Peter struck, willingly submitted despite the swords and clubs. Well aware it bear the worst of death imaginable to fulfill the scriptures with his blood. His disciples fled as he was arrested, bound up, spat at, belted, and disrespected. Jesus was second before the Sanhedrin. High priest, chief priest, elders, teachers, his teachers. Found guilty of blasphemy, sorcery, and rebellion by the Hellions. Denied three times, blindfolded and beaten even more. Mocked and confined for the night. The lax the authority to charge him, so they marched him down to Pontius Pilate. But couldn't find the crime, and the crowd went wild. They insisted against his innocence. Pontius once swaying and ended up saying that since he was Galilean, it was Herod's jurisdiction. So the trips the way all the way to Herod to make more outrageous claims and accusations. Herod asked for a sign, asked many questions, acquires no reply. Christ was trapped with contempt, ridiculed, dressed in the gorgeous robe and sent back again. Pilate pleaded with the people, but the people's hearts were too hard, too hard to satisfy. The eyes were blind. Blinded by the devil in his suasive lies So Pilate brought forth for rappers for a pick Release the righteous or release the sick The Lamb of God took the criminal's position Traded life and freedom for death and conviction Crucifixion was desired by the Jews With no proof and no basis So jaded, Pontius called for the Lord to be scared A shred of the mercy that the Lord deserved Whipped with his wrists fixed to a pillar Whipped and slipped with this figure disfigured Pit of the cinch is inflicted Hit 39 times, cat and nine tails Nine so-called claws appalling all who saw Blood gushing and pouring on the Roman floor Two thousand stitches couldn't fix this Deep incisions with skeletal muscle lifted was beaten by Roman legions, the redeemer teased and sneered at by heathens. He was chastised and penalised without reason. Battered, black and blue, abused, bruised and bleeding. He wore and bore the thorns that gored his head, driven deep with a reed through the skull and the flesh, hardly recognisable as human. Dressed in purple for sport and amusement. Hail the King of Jews, hail the King of Jews. He stood blooded, fucked out, feared, abused. But it won't cut it, the one budge that stood strong as the queer for his frame to be nails to a cross from loved to judge, condemned to death, rejected, neglected and subjected to the most grotesque mistreatment in history. How a saviour suffered to win the victory. He carried the cross till he collapsed, being physically attacked, enduring all to undergo God's wrath. Imagine the sound as the hammer came crashing down on our Lord and Saviour stretched out. That's one through the feet, one through each wrist, through the media nerve for maximum anguish. With dislocated bones and little strength left, hanging on the cross, gasping for breath. He had to drag his haggard back up the rough, rugged splintered cross for every single exhale. Pushing with his feet and pulling with his wrists impaled When they offered him vinegar he refused He prayed, 
Father forgive them for they know not what they do Sent not to condemn the world but to save the sinners He committed his spirit, it is finished Yeah, big up Jesus the Christ Saviour of the world John 3, 16, 17 For God so loved the world That he gave his only begotten son That whosoever believeth in him Should not perish But have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world To condemn the world But that the world through him Might be saved For the wages of sin is death he paid our debt.